Ladies and gentlemen, it's the next podcast, Killer Keller here. Hope this finds you all very well. Um, this is a place where we uh, study and uh, conversate with the upper comers, the next, the next to the next to the next of talent in the UK and beyond. Um, inside this house, House Arcade, we have a lady that has been uh, staggering audiences with her vocal elasticity for a good while now, all across London. And my goodness, she's got some vocal ranges uh, and her music tells a whole story. But we're getting into that story right now. Natalie, Hello. how are we? You good? I'm good. I just gasped silently because we kind of have the same tattoo. Oh, stop it. Off, right. We've both got heart go. tattoos. There you go. No games. <laughs> On the same hand as well. That's good. That's what, what was the motivation behind yours? Um, so when I was like 16 in school, I was struggling with like self-love and like self-esteem and feeling feeling like I didn't fit in even though like I had friends and stuff so I used to draw this heart on my hand just to remind myself that I'm loved and that you know things are okay and then oh, I said as soon as I can I'm gonna get it tatted and then I did when I was like 19 20 nice what about you what's yours uh ex-girlfriend drunk <laughs> Are you joking? Really? Oh, no. <laughs> well, not really. Yeah, I was young when doing it, to be fair. I mean, it's, it sounds like a very heavy rock and roll story, but it wasn't. It was just that it, at the time, you weren't allowed to tattoo your hands and face in tattoo parlours. Why? It was just a legal thing that... Because uh, they wanted to like make sure that you didn't look... Like, mm. you could cover them up. Is mm. that why? Mm. So okay. it didn't damage reputation of you at work mm. sort of thing so we had to do it at home oh my God. which by which time i was already on, on my way you know what i was <laughs> gonna get peace as well yeah i was gonna get peace. peace not on this hand i was gonna get it like on a finger mm -hmm. and then i just decided not to so mm -hmm. so funny isn't love it? and peace is, is that your uh, is that your remit is you know from a musical standpoint no 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 <laughs> get like, into it What's i would yours? say romantic love mm -hmm. yeah um but like a lot of the songs that I have coming out like soon are kind of toxic and a little bit like really yeah they're a little bit more can I swear you can say okay. it's your podcast <laughs> they're a little bit like fuck you like yeah. you did this to me so I'm gonna do it back to you like they're very toxic which isn't like my character but mm. I like to use music as like a way to express parts of myself that I don't necessarily get to in like everyday mm. life so no it's not really peace and love mm. not really you know who does that really well, I find, particularly from a female point of view? Kelly's, early Kelly's. She mm. always used to have this kind of... She was able to transfer that aggression into a really empowering place. Mm. So there is, a, there, is a, there is a space for it in a record collection, isn't there? I think so. I feel like it, it shows um, versatility as an artist and, mm. like, in the messaging as well. Like, I do feel that the next project is going to be a little bit more edgy mm -hmm. than this current one that's out mm -hmm. um and then i'm thinking even further than that and thinking the one after that i want to kind of have some really meaningful songs maybe about mental health or like domestic violence or something that's a bit more like deep if you know what mm -hmm. i mean because a lot of my songs are about um just love and relationships and friendships and i, I think it would be nice to lean into into the more meaningful side because that's why we're artists is to like spread a message and raise awareness for things so yeah kind of waffling but no no yeah. i get it i get it does it is this a lived experience no, no no but it's funny i wrote a song about domestic violence after watching um this film with margot robbie in it i can't mm. remember the name of it now um but it was about her being a figure skater and she had a really abusive partner and after watching that film i was it just like kind of flowed out of me mm -hmm. and then um um, yeah, I, I, I connected with people because um, I put the song out. I, I did take it down, but I did put the song out in like 2019, I think, mm -hmm. um, 2020. And then, um, yeah, it just it just made me more aware that it's such an issue for many women and men, but mm -hmm. mostly women and, and children. Um, why did you take it down? Um, why did I take it down? The mix wasn't great. Mm -hmm. It was all self-produced, self-mixed, self-mastered, all of that. So I think if I was to do it again, I might get a better production on it and get it mixed by someone else. And mm. yeah, but... Um, it's quite a journey, isn't it, putting out music? You know, there's these key stages, which a lot of people have this opportunity, to, you know, with the resources that we have and on our laptops to, to, to complete, you know, be, begin to completion. But then you lose... Um, 
to have other ears with other experiences within specific roles of a pr- produced song mm. it's really important isn't it yeah definitely like i did send it to people for feedback but you know the growth is evident since 2020 whenever mm. i released it so um yeah just trying to keep the standard high mm, <laughs> hell yeah yeah keep the standard high so where did it all begin well, firstly where are you from and where did it all begin so I grew up in Wilson Green. Mm-hmm. My parents are South African, white and black South African. Um, and yeah, I've I've been doing music. I've been singing around the house and stuff since I was a kid and then studied it at uni, college, t- took it for GCSE. Um, and yeah, it's always been a, a big part of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I didn't actually realize I could be a musician until I was about 16. Um, I was like doing music at, uh, um, school and my my, t- my teacher was like you know you can like pursue this as a career and I was like really? I can do what? Yeah <laughs> I can do what? <laughs> this is a thing? This is a thing yeah, yeah. and like I remember I used to um, do a bit of production back then as well because we had to do it as part of the GCSE course and um, like I didn't realise how songs were made I just kind of thought that songs existed mm-hmm. and then it wasn't until like then where I was like oh wait people like programming the beats and mm. like this and that i don't know like what I th- where i thought they came from mm. but yeah and then from there i just sparked a passion in me to to take it seriously and from then i've just been trying to figure it out up until now yeah yeah figuring it out yeah like there's no playbook for how to become a full-time artist no i feel like it's kind of unless you have the right connects right from the beginning you kind of just have to figure it out mm. Um, and so, yeah, I've, I've come up with a lot of great opportunities, like working with Mobo and Sung, and that's connected me really well. Um, and like doing competitions and, and stuff like that to find the right people. But it's taken a while to like... Yeah, it does. I would imagine so because, yeah, when you're, when you're on your own grind in your own lane, one size doesn't always fit all. So you've got to find the right people, or they have to gravitate to you in a way, don't they? Yeah. Like, I found something I've learned is that looking at what other people have got and, and how they got their opportunities is just such a waste of time. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like, like you said, one size doesn't fit all and something that works for Kerry isn't going to work for me. Mm. Like, you know, um, even like just based on social media, like maybe Kerry, I don't know who Kerry is, would post a video of her like singing a specific song and it blows up and then I do the exact same thing and nothing happens mm-hmm. and then leaning into something that I never thought would work is the thing that works so mm. it's just a mystery mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but it's a fun mystery isn't it yeah not always mm. what's I've the hardest what's the biggest stumbling blocks you feel that you you come up against I can't imagine many to be fair like but yeah mm. I think Uh, feeling like I'm not supported like Mm. I've had a lot of support but there's a lot that you have to figure out yourself Mm. and people are not going to back you unless you back yourself and like you show that you've got something to offer Mm. and I think understanding that and realizing that like people don't just give you things because you're talented or because you're a good writer it's like you have to prove yourself in this industry Mm. I think that's been quite difficult um, but I feel like I'm at a place now where I feel more confident in myself and and that I have a lot to offer as an artist. So I feel I feel okay. I feel good. Yeah, and that's the right way to be because although people do give you things just on raw talent, it normally comes with a kickback of they want a lot more out of you in the long run. Mm. Record labels are notorious for that or have been. Yeah, exactly, so. exactly. So self-sufficient, self-sustaining ability and coming up with concepts, bringing things to the forefront that you can then present to a team, that kind of stability. I would agree. Mm. Yeah. What kind of music were you brought up on? Any? Yeah. My mum played a lot of like South African jazz wow. in the house. And like Fela Kuti, Miriam Makeba, um bit of Tracy Chapman you know mm. uh who else and then like Beyonce obviously is like mm. a staple in mm. most R&B pop singers um 
upbringing. Uh, Destiny Child. Mm. Who else? Miley Cyrus. Nice. Big Hannah wow. Montana fan. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> I loved her so much. Um, yeah, like a lot of pop and a lot of R&B and then the rootsy South African music as well. So who, but who were the people that influenced you in your direction? Like, I can't hear, and this is a compliment, mm. you know, I don't, I don't hear any specific thing. It's, it's identifiably you. So, Ooh, thanks. so, so what, what is the, what, what are the key, you know, if you had an avatar in your head of who the, of who influenced me? Yeah. Um, I would say Rihanna, like, oh, I forgot to mention Rihanna. <laughs> Um, yeah. How could I forget her? Um, Rihanna, Beyonce, um, and then I love like Tori Kelly for her vocals. Mm. And like when I perform live, um, I, I play with a guitar. So mm. like her. Um, but yeah, I would say I, I do try to look within myself to create sounds and stuff that I want to create instead of like trying to sound like someone else. Like I might mm. have influence and be like, oh, I like that Rihanna track. Let's make a song like that, but make it mine. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I always try to come back to my own voice. Yeah. Um, but definitely have so many influences like from those queens, mm. lots of female artists. I also really like The Weeknd. Ah, nice. Like The Weeknd's early stuff. Yeah. Have you heard? Yeah, of course. Like I grew up listening to that like when I was like a teenager like smoking it up with my friends listening to the weekend so <laughs> so edgy that all rhymed as well by the way <laughs> yeah, you just dropped a verse <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um yeah definitely him too um so many people yeah i mean it's endless isn't it mm. music is endless um the creative process is endless how how do you retain because your videos are very um not only effective that work along with the songs but they they're quite emotive and um uh, uh, they've got a lot of characters, characterful energy about them. Like it seems to me that you carry a lot of the creative creativity across to the media side of things with music videos and such, things like TikTok and and such. You know, mm. you you kind of carry that through. Is is that as much play as you know being in a studio and, and just enjoying the process of writing? Yeah, I mean, I think like if you ask my producer, like when we're in the studio, we're just like laughing and like being silly um and then we come up with a great song um but i feel like that playfulness is it allows more freedom mm. and it allows more yeah you just don't you don't care as much about like oh this has to be like the best thing ever it's like okay we're aiming for quality but like let's have fun mm. so yeah i think so but how do you extend that into because there's obviously a an idea that you're creating as the song's emerging about the concept of the video, how you roll out a song on social media. How, mm. do, you, how do you transfer that energy and still retaining that energy and build a concept in your head? So do you mean like how do I come up with a concept for a video? Yeah, using the, the initial you know, ingredients of a song that's slowly uh, developing. Okay. You know? um, honestly... I'm not like that much of a visual person, like when it comes to my music. For certain songs, I'll have like a very clear image of like the video needs to be like this mm -hmm. and it will be like instant. And then other songs I'm like, I have no idea what to do with this. Mm. Um, so recently I've kind of just been like closing my eyes and meditating and like listening to the song and seeing what comes up in my head. Mm -hmm. um, and also like referencing other artists or like other music videos has been really helpful mm -hmm. in having like a very clear idea of what I want to portray. Mm -hmm. Cause I find like artists like Sade, um, who else, Rihanna, like they have very different but very strong and striking imagery. Mm. So like I would just like make a Pinterest board of like all the different artists that I wanna sort of lean into their styles for like a certain music video or like a look that I want to create. Mm. And then uh, again, then I'll try and bring it back to me and make it authentic to me. Um, so yeah, a mixture of different things like Pinterest and then also just like looking inside myself. I go, that sounds so corny, but like closing my eyes and like meditating and seeing what comes into my head. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that answers your question. It certainly does. Okay. The, the process 
it extends so far, especially when you're doing it, you know, single-handedly or with a, a small team. He's conveying that idea. Pinterest is a great one because then you can, you know, here's the memo. Yeah, literally <laughs> just send the board over and be like, this is what we're doing. Yeah, um, but for my recent video, I worked with um, a videographer called Sam Kinsella and he's mm. done work for like Prada and this other artist called Ants Live, who I'm a massive fan of. That's how I found um, wow. Sam's work because I just love Ants, he's sick. When you just hit him up? And I just hit him up, I was like, hey Sam, like, can we do a video? And he was like, send me the song, I'll wow. let you know. And yeah, we, we, we just started working on it and um, he was amazing, great eye, super like locked in the whole video. Mm -hmm. We um, were filming from 5 p.m. till like 3 a.m. Mm. And he was sweating at certain points, like, but he didn't complain once. He was just like... <laughs> Seasoned yeah. videographers, he, they know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, he was, he was amazing. Um, and he really helped my vision come to life. We had a, a motorbike um, in, the, in the film. I'm going to call it a film now. Nice. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was really sick. First time ever riding a motorbike. So it's really cool. Wow. What's your ambitions? What, what, what's, what's your biggest, what are, your, what are the goals you've set? Cool, I don't want to jinx anything here, like, you know, but what, what's, the, what's the key goal to? I have so many. Go on. Where, where should I start? Where do you want to, where do you want to begin? What's, your, what's, what's, the, what's the priority? The priority? Yeah. Just be like, known across the world, I guess. Mm. Um, be self-sufficient. Um, be able to, live a an abundant life through music and um and also help other people through mm. my music so like raising awareness for different things for different um causes that are important to me um and to just like be able to travel and touch as many people as I can with mm. my with my art and mm. my voice and um just have it be my entire life. It already is my entire life, but like yeah. outwardly as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can tell. You can tell it's your entire life, and and that's mainly by the attention to detail on your your vo your vocals, your vocabulary, but also the fact that you play instruments as well. Where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram at Natalie Lindy, Natalie underscore L I N D I, uh, TikTok. Um, where else can you find me? Facebook, YouTube, go and watch the new music video for 515. Um, if I do say so myself, it is pretty sick. Go so go and have a watch. Talk that shit. Go, go and listen to my music on Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, wherever you listen to music is there. Um, and yeah, before we end, do I it. need to give a shout out go to for it. Tommy. Tommy Evans. Who oh, big up Tommy. Hell also yeah. Also on the show yeah. because he connected us to. That's right. Big um, up Tommy. And thank you so much for thank having me. Thank you for coming down, Miss Lindy. It's yeah. my pleasure, man. Um, you know what to do? Go discover. We're going to go do some knife sessions right now, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah wicked. You can stop. Sleeping at night, staying up until quarter past five. I don't want to face the light. My mind's confused. I'm abusing my time. And they all try to give me advice. Say I should find my balance and just read the line. I've tried, but nothing hits like when it's late and we're intertwined. How you make this feeling go away? Getting used to all the pain You touch me and you take me to a higher place All I need is one kiss Just to taste Cause the enemies inside me I don't wanna fight Baby, give me flavor Breathe me back to life How you make this feeling Make this feeling Make this feeling the rap verse, yeah? Do it. Oh, it went a little something like this. If you 
buys me a drink and he winks and I smile and he says that he likes my teeth gems. Calling me paying us for my number and he says he'll see me next weekend. Get home, hop out the Uber, calls my land, no answer, he's vexing. I can see in his eyes that he's trying to give me black shots and I'm like a veteran. Started as lost, but it's been two months and he's looking at me real different. Don't smoke anymore, but I know how to roll, so it's his suit that I'm billing. Now I hang on his arm like a bracelet and he's walking me back to the station. Yeah, I don't really know how to say this, but you make this feeling. Go away, I was getting used to all the pain You touch me and you take me to a higher place All I need is one kiss